Well, hello guys. This is uh, Kevin, Landro, Treebird, whatever you want to call me. Uh, it's having a bit of a early morning walk. This is one of the advantages of um, living in mid Wales. Um, lovely part of the world. A bit cold, a bit wet, all that kind of stuff. But um, uh, first thing I do, literally when I get up, is is go for a little walk with my, my lovely sassy boo bear. She's an Alaskan Malamute. And we take around this um, this park, which is close to, close to where we live. Um, beautiful little place. Uh, it's um, lots of little trails and walks uh, through natural environment and do a couple of miles every morning and it gets me uh, gets me in the mood for the rest of the day. Um, I do it before work, do it before gaming, do it before any sport, anything like that. It's a lovely therapeutic way to start the day. I think walks are really important. They get you, you know, you get the fresh air, you're surrounded by nature and um, all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's the start of every day. So um, I'll I'll uh, show you some of the sights of, of the rock park in this little video. Um, and, and this is the entrance. This is kind of where we live. Uh, we sort of walk down the road there and then we start walking down into the park, park down in there. And it gets absolutely stunning. I'll show you some of the sights in a second. So um, yeah, it's the first little intro video. One of my favorite bits of the whole trail really. Um, it's a little bridge, it just leads to a field over there which Sash loves running around in. Uh, and just down there is a lovely little uh, valley that's been carved out by the little stream that runs down through the rock park. You've got a few other little walks that you can take from this direction. Um, but we like to go over the field first. Well, that's Sass likes to go in the field first. Um, we'll probably follow this stream then down um, to the river. Uh, there's a beautiful location called Lover's Leap down there. Um, so we'll, we'll head that way. Uh, but the field is basically just your bog standard field. We'll have a little look at that now, as you can see. Sass is never your most enthusiastic or energetic first thing in the morning. <laughs> she's uh, in the breed, the Malamute breed, they will do just as much as their owner, so she's a very good reflection of what I'm like in the mornings. It takes us a while to get going. Um, but generally, she sees a few other dogs or, or um, has a bit of a sniff around. She suddenly picks up the pace and, and starts enjoying it a bit more and running around. Um, like I said, we try and do a few miles, um, and it's good for both of us, it's good for her, keeps her nice and active and, and subtle. Uh, supple keeps me nice and fit and active and supple, uh, and I enjoy enjoy coming over um, this part of Landod. I just think it's beautiful. It's so so lovely to be surrounded by all this nature. Um, and literally a stone's throw from my place. We're then we've walked at the moment we walked probably about half a mile in total, uh, and we're we're suddenly out in in the open countryside in, in mid Wales, and it's just beautiful. Um, like I said, weather um, being in mid Wales, we get a lot of relief rainfall. It's regularly raining. Snow is quite regular. I've had a lot of snow lately. I've got some pictures I'll put on at the end of this video of some, some epic snow encounters around here. I mean, this part of the world, as you can imagine, when it's completely covered in snow, is just, it's just stunning. Um, but uh, we do get a bit of sun sometimes. <laughs> Not a lot. But, uh, but we're very lucky to live here. I mean, we do have to wear wellies and, and big thick coats and stupid hats and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but that's just part of... Uh, it's one small little thing we have to put up with, but the benefits of this part of the world is fantastic. Um, so yeah, this is basically one little part of, of where I walk every day. Uh, and I'll show you um, the river when I head down that way in a minute, which I think is just stunning. And, and I say I do this every day, I'm quite sure what Sass is doing. But as I said, she gets more excited when we come out onto this field. Her ears prick up and the smells and, and all that get to her. And she's in has a little lay down. Probably wants to go back to bed. Come on, Sass. This way. Sass, come on. Good girl. Um, and you, you know, you regularly meet people around here. I think it's important, like, for being active, for being physically active, is to, is to do it with somebody else. I think it's a motivator to do it with somebody else. That could be a fraudulent slip. Um, but to do the activity of which you choose with somebody else, yeah, it's a motivator. Um, it helps you. And I'm quite lucky that I've got a dog. Okay, it's not a Freudian slip again. I'm gonna to have to rephrase this. <laughs> I'm quite lucky that I've got a dog who I can walk with uh, and get out into the countryside and all that kind of stuff because she's a motivator. You know, you've got to get up, you've got to take her out in the morning or else she'll mess everywhere, which isn't good. So that's my motivator, but it could be a friend. It could be um, anybody, you know, you could just go out and you can just have a little wander around and you can meet up regularly. I mean, I have to do this every day, twice a day, because it's the dog, but um, myself and my girlfriend, Amy, um, we go on a big walk every, um, Sunday and we try and make it three, four miles, we take the dogs with us and we go up into the countryside. It's a chance to unwind from work and all the stresses of everyday life, all that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, 
it, it could be a pet, it could be a friend, but some people like to do it on their own. It's just a way of, of unwinding personally. So, you know, you can go on your own. There's no problem with that. It's just, it's just as beneficial. And it, it depends what you want to get from it. I like to, like, for me, it's about getting myself in the mood, sort of physical activity first thing in the day. Some people, it's an unwind, and you get that benefit too. Um, it's a win-win situation, really. These lovely little walks, and, and this is part of a, a healthy, balanced lifestyle. Physically active. I mean, we all know what it's like with gaming. You can get addicted. You can end up wasting hour upon hour when it should be a balance. You know, you are balanced. Being physically active, eating well, social life hugely important. It's too easy to become consumed by games, especially World of Warcraft. So, um, I think yeah, yeah the, the more times you can you can get out and about you'll end up enjoying your gaming a lot more, I can promise you that. Um, you know, I, I, I go back now and maybe have a couple of hours of games, but day off from work today. Um, so take the dog for a walk and then go back to, to the house, have, have some breakfast, uh, probably have some porridge or something like that, and then have a couple of hours of gaming and, and I enjoy the gaming so much more. Um, I could have gone on it as soon as I got up in the morning, um, but after a walk it's so much better. So yeah, that's, what, that's why I do these things. So. Uh, I'll leave this little snippet of the video now and we'll go and have a look down the river. There's a bit of a walk away so I won't film all the way down there. <laughs> so yeah, this is um, part three of the video. And as you can see, I'm now sort of walk, walking down through the forest. And you can see the river kind of coming round there in an arc. And we run on down, or we walk on down at the moment, uh, uh, to the section which is known as Lover's Leap. It's a really beautiful part of Landod, um, which is the place I live, Little Town, Mid Wales. Uh, well, um, it's small. Uh, it's a few thousand people big, <laughs> which isn't the greatest in terms of your social life, but we're, we're close to big enough seas and that to get out and about. Um, but we are fortunate to have you know this kind of scenery right on our doorstep. So lucky, and you know, we do have to look at that. I mean, it is a great place to bring up kids. I was brought, brought up here. I moved here when I was young from England. I lived in uh, Southampton. Was born in Portsmouth. Um, yeah, two cities in the south of England. Uh, huge comparatively. Um, so when we come here, it was a bit of a culture shock to start with, um, but when I started getting into things like fishing and swimming and all that kind of stuff, um, and starting to fall in love with nature, uh, you realise just how lucky you are to be in a place like this, especially when I go back and visit my friends and my family uh, in other parts of the UK. Um, it's, it's a real eye-opener just to, to realise it and, and to understand how easy it is for people uh, to maybe get a little bit clustered and not be so physically active and not get out in the countryside because it's, it's so far away and for me I've walked probably a, a mile of that and I'm here at an absolutely beautiful location um, it's just it's just stunning and and you can come you know come down here anytime you want it's not like you've got to get permission this is open land you know uh, it's, um, Effectively, what you'd say is like a nature reserve. It's, it's managed by the Rock Park Town Trust. It's a little organisation, Land Odd, that do great work. Um, you know, maintaining paths and putting barriers up, keeping people safe. Um, but me and Sass, we enjoy it. She enjoys sniffing plants. She's a very funny dog, actually. She's got a um, keen sense of smell uh, for all kinds of flora. It's, a, it's the main thing she's <laughs> she's interested in. She loves going sniffing new plants. Um, she loves rubbing up against any kind of carnivorous <laughs> plants, anything that's, um, you know, your, your perennials, she loves them. <laughs> and she loves sniffing flowers, she's a really funny dog. I think it's just like uh, the excitement of um, something, you know, the smell and something new. This is, obviously I don't recommend people walking up here, it's a bit mossy, a bit rock covered. But this is what is known as Lover's Leap and in the summer, uh, this place is just, just absolutely stunning. Um, Everybody gathers here from Land Odd uh, in the field just, just beyond this tree, which I'll show you now. It's the braver ones jump from these ledges down into the, the water down below. Um, obviously pretty dangerous, <laughs> um, but you know what kids are like uh, and young adults are like and, and all that sort of thing. But it's quite deep down there, so it's not as dangerous as you'd think, uh, as long as you don't slip on your run-up. Uh, and we can see that. I'll probably uh, do a few videos from, from here in the summer with some of my friends. And it's one of those places in Land Odd. Um, that you just know in the summer months, um, people will be here. Uh, you don't need to arrange it. You just uh, head on down and there'll be people having barbecues, having picnics, having a swim. Uh, and it's, that one, it's a thing as well because a lot of adults come down, even though there are kids swimming in, in what is effectively a river. 
um, they kind of keep each other safe, you know. Uh, I've, I've seen, I've been down here before when a kid got into some difficulty, uh, and uh, a, an adult just whipped off the clothes and swam out there and, and helped them out. Um, so it is interesting in that sense. You've got the old people in a small community like this as well, in particular, that uh, want to help each other out and, and keep an eye on each other. Um, it's a little bit swollen at the moment. We've had some snow and we've had some uh, some rain, which is an unusual. And it looks, I don't know if you can catch this on the video, but it looks quite um, treacherous, the water. There's a lot of undercurrents and stuff. There's a, um, a few sort of kind of like um, dangerous looking parts. But in the summer, when it's a little bit shallower, the water's not flowing so fast. Um, it's, yeah, a lot a lot safer then. Um, but this is another part of another field that you can come to. Unfortunately, a few pylons, but we will got to have electricity. We'll be able to play well without our electricity. It does kind of stamp stamp through a, a lovely part of the world um, but it's got to be done in the modern world um, you, you hear the things about wind farms which um, big debate about it in this part of the world at the moment a lot of people against it which is a bit annoying because all forms of renewable energy something we've got to consider something we've got to got to sort out um, you know oil's going to run out coal's going to run out I ain't a preach I'm not going to preach about all this but I think anybody with any semblance of you know a brain cell in their head it's got to be worried about the, the state of um, our environment. So it's important that we we do preserve things as much as possible. And when you get big pylons like that, it's, you know, this is one of those sacrifices we've got to make for the way that we live our, our westernised world. Um, anyway, I've gone slightly off topic. I'm here uh, at the river now. Come down, there's a little area just just down here that Sass likes to have a little swim in. Um, it's basically a very, it's where the river shallows out, gets a little bit faster, but you can you can wade out into it. And we go out there and we throw some sticks for her. She absolutely loves it, it's a physical activity. She's far too intelligent to play fetch, apparently. So she doesn't do that, I have to go get the stick, because apparently I'm the one that hasn't got the brain cells <laughs> to, to know that I'm just gonna throw it again. Um, but she she likes it in the water, so she goes and has a swim, chases a few sticks, and, and you know, combined with a couple of mile walk, she's had a good little workout. And so far, you can probably tell I'm getting a bit out of breath now. By the time I get home, I feel thoroughly sort of energized and, and refreshed and ready to go and whatever I need to do that day. So yes, yeah, the first real life video of Landro, tree bird, Kev, which you'll probably refer to me as when it's actually me. Um, and I'll put another PVP video up tonight. I'm gonna do, uh, I think I'm 72, so I'll do some more low level stuff. Probably get smashed in the face by everybody who's fully raffle lich king geared. Could be a bit of fun though. Um, benefit of druids again, as I was saying before. Cat form, stealth, tree meld, all that kind of stuff. It's good that I can, um, I can escape danger uh, and have a bit of fun. Are you coming in, Sass? Um, as you can see, she thinks I'm a fool again by walking out into the water here. I've got my wellies on, so no damage. <laughs> but um, she's just standing there. I've woken up. Here comes Sus. She's just looking at me as if say it's stupid. But eventually she comes in and comes in. So we're gonna splash around together. So um, yeah, thanks for watching. Let's do some more of these videos. We've got some other lovely little walks I'm gonna go on. I'm gonna do a few cooking ones, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, keep keep 